do when a company reports a seemingly good quarter, but its stock doesn't react the way you thought it would? Take Genpak, a company that was spun off by GE back in 2005, and I remember when it was. Later, when public in 2007, Genpak provides all kinds of business process outsourcing information technology services to more than 800 clients. Last night, the company reported a seemingly strong quarter, a three-cent earnings beat off of a 40-cent basis, higher than expected sales, up 17% year-over-year. Yet after opening strong, uh, the stock uh, was 4% to a new all-time high. Genpak shares actually slid back, closing up just 1%. Now, you know what this is? This is about expectations. The stock had been red hot going into the quarter. It had already rallied more than 30% year-to-date, so it was inevitable that some investors would sell the news even after a terrific quarter. But do not take it from me. Let's check in with Tiger Jiagarajan. He's the president and CEO of Genpak to learn more about the quarter and where the company's headed. Tiger, welcome to Man Money. Jim, thank you so much. All right, have a seat. Thank have you. a seat. I think your company's fascinating because I've always watched, I like professional racing. Let's use the case of Virgin, one of your customers. And I always try to figure out, well, uh, when do they know, like, the battery's going to die? Yes. And they know it because you do predictive software. Oh, yeah. We, we sit behind the scenes. We're not right. there. And we not only do predictive software that takes the information from the car, but also the weather. Because depending on humidity and temperature, the battery could decay faster than... And guess what? The driver, because if the driver uses the brakes too often, battery will die. I've actually seen a race where the car stops with the finish line just there. How tragic is yeah, that? Yeah, I know. No one else, no one would know other than you guys. Now, you, when I was looking over the, the data that you gave me, one of the things I thought was fascinating, I got to go right there. Artificial intelligence has a bias? How is that possible? It's artificial intelligence. How could it be rigged to have a, how could it be have a bias? But Jim, it's artificial, right? So which means right. it's based on our intelligence and it's based on the data that you feed it. Okay. So if you take five years of data that is, that has a bias in it, so let's take the example of in the lending environment, let's say someone has had a bias in lending. Okay. You take all that data, you feed it in, the machine continues to do what you were doing, so the bias continues. So you catch the bias? No, so, so you need to understand what are the biases that could be there in the past data. Okay. And then you say, I want to remove that bias. So you have to then introduce rules over and above existing data to actually change the bias. If you allow regular AI mm -hmm. to work on old data, you'll get the new is equal to the old. I found that fascinating because we all kind of presume that a AI cleans up everything. Uh, you do some great stuff for Mondelez. They report a very good yeah. quarter, quarter this week. It's also predictive. Yeah, it, what we do for Mondelez is actually very interesting. So we do a lot of work in their finance and accounting group. And think about a group of people who are doing analysis uh, to actually say, here's the trend line of sales, here's the right. trend line of price, and here's the trend line of costs. You can actually introduce, again, AI, machine learning, right. and automate all of that. But what that does is it allows people to actually then spend more time to understand why. What is happening here? Right. What do I do? A lot of people today in companies spend time preparing the data right. and spend too little time deciding, so what should I do? What AI and machine learning can do, which is why we think about humans and machines working together, is that the machine can do all of that and says, here's the prediction. And then the human says, okay, since I know that's the prediction, here's what I'm going to do to prevent that from happening. Right. Okay, so you also still, uh, you know, spun off by GE, you do a lot of GE work. Yes. Again, is it this kind of uh, finance business? And, and how do you fend off others? I mean, Workday would like to get into some of your stuff for HR, HR and finance. I'm trying to figure out, like, where you win head-to-head -head against some of the companies we have on. So actually, Workday is a great company. Uh, we do not do HR. Okay. Uh, and we actually partner with Workday to use their technology to actually provide HR services if we have to. We don't okay. do much of HR. But we partner with SAP. We partner with Oracle. We use other people's technology to actually then provide the services and then provide tools that sit on top of that technology, uh, which does AI machine learning. Because it, the, the reality is the world of digital allows you to go into different technologies, okay. bring the data up, and then provide the predictive analytics that then people can decide what to do with. Well, when you, let's say, an example of, say, when you work with Walmart, which is a great client, uh, a consumer packaged good company may owe Walmart a million, and Walmart may owe that company a million at the same time, right? Because yeah. money goes back and forth. Right. And without you, it, it literally is just, well, let's give them a million while we're waiting for their million, and you guys can match up the flows? Well, we could, but, but really that's currently not what we do. What we do okay. is actually focus a lot on paying Walmart suppliers. Okay. And in that process, what you really want to achieve is how do you get that payment out of the door right. exactly on time? See, because you don't okay, want to pay too so early. 
Okay. But you have to pay exactly on time, but you also can't make mistakes. And if you do that right, and remember, these are so many transactions, more than a million, two million transactions. And if you do that right, the supplier is thrilled. Right. Walmart is extremely thrilled. The supplier then supplies on okay. time, and the consumer, you and I, can always find the stock on the store. But a million, million, you guys find out a way to recognize this and call it even. That's right. I, I, that's hard. It, 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 it requires intelligence in the middle. Right. Uh, and that intelligence you can build over time using machine learning. Uh, so we are on that journey with Walmart. We are on the journey with Walmart's, for example, Mondelez, with a customer of Walmart right. and so on. Right. And then finally, for, uh, for Bridgewater, which is a company we know well, you do some parts. It says you, know, you do some parts of HR, but it's corporate shared services. Yeah. And again, I mean, these are hard things for us to understand, but you do them well, and you're getting that business. How do you get that kind of business? How do people find out about GenPack? So, so to start with, having grown up with an iconic firm when, when it was uh, Lean and Six Sigma, and Jack Welch was yeah. driving it in the early days of, we grew up at that time. And then when we spun off, we said, let's hold on to that and use it. So we are deep in Six Sigma, we are deep in process. Right. And we really understand the industries that we serve. So that's one way we get calls. The other is our net promoter score. Our clients love us, Jim. Right. Uh, no, no, I know. You're, you're and and therefore, well clients well. pick up the phone and say, talk to these guys. And then we have to earn our stripes with the new client. There's no question. Uh, so to some extent, we are a big believer in reputation. That's all that matters to us. Well, and we measure that through net promoter score. Well, you've got great lifelong clients that really do love you. And you do a very, you have a great niche. Great niche. Okay, that's Tiger Tiagrajan. There we go, CEO of GenPack. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. And it was a good quarter. I know the stock just had run a lot. Stay with me. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.